What do you make of the, the results? And I, obviously not the big headlines that Biden won and Trump won. But what do you make of, of how this is all playing out, the number of people who came out, uh, the enthusiasm, and the fact that Wisconsin, though Joe Biden won, is a tight place? Well, it's great to be with you, Ellie, tonight. And it's a big night in Wisconsin. I think the, the core story is kind of uh, shown with what happened in each party in the election day today. Trump was telling his supporters to wait in line to see him speak. And Democrats were asking people to knock on doors all over the state, which we did. We've knocked on hundreds of thousands of doors, phone calls, relational contacts over the last month, tens of thousands of voters we've reached just today to support local candidates, to get out the vote for President Biden. And then you see the results. The Republican Party is divided. They're still in the middle of a civil war, a civil war about whether we should be a democracy, about who won in 2020, and whether we should acknowledge reality about national abortion bans, which uh, Trump is teasing that he's about to announce his support for. Uh, we don't know what, exactly what he's going to say. On the Democratic side, there's a clear call for change in the in the Middle East, the, the heartbreaking crisis that we're seeing, and a very clear vote of confidence for President Biden. Democrats want to stop Trump. They want another Biden-Harris term. They want to see progress. And that is what most people want. It's not just uh, hardcore Democrats, most independents, uh, a lot of Republicans, and almost all Democrats want to see us move forward, protect freedom and democracy, move towards peace and justice, and an economy that works for working people and brings down costs instead of... Uh, ransacking the national treasury to hand out huge bags of money to the ultra wealthy, which is the Trump way of doing the economy. So let's uh, let's divide those two things up. The, the on the one side of things, the the abortion, the freedoms, the liberty, the future of the country, democracy, that whole bucket of things in a, in a tight place like Wisconsin. In fact, since the last election, we have seen on the matter of abortion, it worked out differently in, in uh, Wisconsin than it did in Michigan because it was a, a judicial election. But we saw people do the same thing that they did in, in Michigan. When pressed about the issues of liberty and freedom, they chose liberty and freedom, and Donald Trump's on the wrong side of that one. That's absolutely right. Everywhere where people have, a ch have had the chance to go to the ballot, uh, ballot box and cast a vote for whether they should make their own decisions about their own bodies or whether politicians should override themselves and their doctors and, and the choices that, that they need to be able to make. Every time, voters vote for freedom. And it's as clear as day. It's as clear as day. And the 2024 election, in some ways, will be a referendum on whether to have a national abortion ban. What the Republicans are putting on the table with Mike Johnson as the Speaker of the House, with these array of MAGA Republicans running for U.S. Senate, including in Wisconsin, Eric Hovde, who last time he ran, supported a total abortion ban in, in 2012, and life begins at conception, the attacks on IVF that we've seen in Alabama. This is what the Republican Party is putting on offer. And on the other side, as President Biden said in his State of the Union address, you, you, you elect a Congress that believes in reproductive freedom, that sends him a bill to put the protections of Roe versus Wade back into place, he will sign that bill. And we will defend reproductive freedom coast to coast, nationwide in Wisconsin and everywhere else. That is the choice that voters have. So However me, they feel about the candidates, they can they can make a choice about whether they want the power to make their own decisions about their own lives or yeah. they want uh, Republican politicians to override it. And it's so as simple as let that. Let me ask you this, because um, you're not running for office, so I think you're going to give me a more straight answer than people who are in office running for office. 9.3 percent of people voted uninstructed. That's 31,800 or 32,000 votes already, and we still have more votes to come in. That's more people who went out and said, I'm not going to support Joe Biden, now we don't know if that happens in the election, then Democrats won by in the last election. That's a, that's a big number. And Michigan was a big number, too. That's enough to sink Democrats in both states if there isn't a better answer than what Biden's come up with so far. Do you worry about that? Well, the voters who cast ballots in the uninstructed column, they voted in the Democratic primary. So they're, they're Democrats. They know that Trump is not the answer. And they were voting to send a message about change that they want to see, not after the election, but before the election. Uh, what they're calling for is what most Americans want and, and the president is, is calling for and working towards, which is an enduring, just peace. 
that is that is what people want to see. And when we see the heartbreaking uh, deaths that are happening right now of kids, of, of aid workers, um, and, and the situation with hostages, both for Israel and Palestine, what we need is self-determination and, and peace and a resolution to the crisis that we see right now. Uh, voters are calling for that change, and they're doing it in the most civic way possible by mm -hmm. casting ballots. If you vote in the primary election, you're much more likely to vote in November. So the opportunity now is to is to create that change, make clear what the values are that the administration, Biden and Harris, are, are working to advance. And as we see change on the ground, we have the opportunity to come together around that. The contrast will become even clearer with a Trump administration. What they would do in this situation is total disregard for the lives of Palestinian civilians, uh, frankly, for the hostages, for just about anyone else. And that's the contrast that will become more and more clear as we make progress. So this is this is a call for change. It's a protest vote in the great American tradition uh -huh. of, of speaking your mind at the ballot box. And it's civic engagement. It's not tuning out from the system. It's getting involved. I think we have a chance to earn all these votes for the Biden-Harris team as we get into November. Well, I, I agree with you. I applaud people who will get up and go to the ballot vo box to, to make their uh, protest. Ben, great to see you, as always. Thank you, my friend. Ben Wickler is the chairman of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.